This illustration deals with grounding simply derived systems that are AC systems in accordance with 250.30. Now notice, due to engineers, contractors, electrician, inspectors as well, they wanted all the rules for simply derived system grounding wise put into 250.30 of the NEC. We finally have accomplished that. But now notice at the service to the left, see main binding jumper, 250.28 A through D. Now notice to the right though, we have to the left, system bonding jumper, SBJ abbreviated, 250.30 A1. And it would be size same way. Say that you had a four alt conductors coming off the secondary side of that transformer, hitting a 225 amp main, that supply side bonding jumper would be number two. That grounded conductor coming in would be at least number two, is, is basically what it would be. And then, of course, you would, uh, uh, you would basically uh, have a, uh, a piping system that encloses the conductors that would prevent a parallel path from, from occurring. So basically, you know, you're looking at a non-metallic type uh, wiring method, so to speak. Then notice the grounding electrode conductor routed over to the structural steel. That would be number two, based upon the four alt. Now, now, what does this tell you as an electrician? I'm opening up that panel cover. And it, it doesn't matter if I'm a maintenance electrician or construction electrician if it's the first time I'm seeing that panel. Well, I would look at uh, the 70B uh, standard, 15.9.9, and it would say, check that grounding. So I would look at the four alt, and that needs to be at least number two or larger. If I had a bonding jumper that was bonding that bar into the can, if it's a conductor, it had to be at least number two. So everything in there would have to be at least number two. You'd say, well, what if I had two standard lock nuts and a bushing, and I had a... Uh, a supply side bonding jumper coming off of that, uh, bonding the metal race with that, that'd that be number two also. No, you'd say, I don't like that. I've got clean holes there with, for, to, to terminate my fittings. So I'll just use two lock nuts, one of them self bonding, and a bushing. You're done. And I know I can find that in 250.92, B as in boy. We'll get into that also. But you see all the things that we have to be aware of uh, to look at if we're in these uh, commercial areas doing this kind of work. And just being a, a, a halfway electrician doesn't cut it. You're going to make mistakes if you don't know the code. You know, it's, it's hard enough knowing the code and prevent making a mistake. So uh, you should study the code book, just like you would your, uh, using a screwdriver, using clines, channel locks, or whatever, any of your tools that you have with your electrician kit that you have in a pouch or whatever. Your code is a tool, a very important tool. And again, I, I can't overemphasize uh, to you, you need to get you a study guide to go by. And you don't have to use ours. You can use anybody's you're comfortable with but use the, uh, the type of uh, book that gives you the information to make you a better electrician. That's where you're going to get your knowledge, and then along with your experience, you become a very good electrician. You're not a body. You're an electrician. And uh, try to do that. I think the more you study the code, the more you'll get into it, because you'll find out how much you do not know. That's all of us. That's all of us, my friend. The more you study the code, the more you learn. The more you read the code, you'll run, you'll run across something and say, dang, I never saw that before. But you picked it up because you slowed down a little bit. So set, a, set some time aside to read your code book. Even if it's 30 minutes or an hour uh, a night, pick you a time to read your code book and do it. Uh, I recommend it very highly to you, and I promise you this, you'll never be sorry if you do. 
Pick out the articles that deal with what you do first. That's most important.